Hello, my name is Jim Kenny from Informatica Customer Support, and today's support video will be covering the frequently asked question What does the SNUS property for proactive monitoring for power center rules do? During uh, this video, we'll be covering the agenda here, and uh, first we'll discuss what is this news event property in PMPC rules and what does it do? This news event property is used for throttling alerts. All PC underscore notifications events have a property called snooze, which is a numeric value represented in minutes. When PC underscore notifications events are created and then evaluated by the RTM or email alerting rules, they all have a condition which checks the PC underscore alert underscore history table. This is the table in the proactive monitoring repository which houses a history of each alert that gets generated uh, by proactive monitoring. So again, it checks the alert history table for the most recent occurrence of that alert. And then, if that last occurrence or last instance of that alert type has occurred within the specified snooze period, then the rule will not fire. Meaning, if, you know, the, since we talk about the snooze property being set in minutes, let's say the snooze property equals 60 minutes or one hour. If an alert is now generated at this time, we go, the proactive monitoring goes and checks the database and sees if the, another alert for this exact same rule has been generated within 60 minutes. If it has, and the snooze property being set to 60, this means that the rule will not fire. Now, on the other hand, if the last instance of that alert type occurred outside of the snooze period, so let's say the last time we got an alert for this particular rule was over an hour ago, then the rule will fire and the alert will be generated. Now a snooze value of zero means the rule will fire every single time regardless of how often the alert occurs. Uh, so basically, um, what we'll do is we're going to talk about how to basically uh, determine the originating rule that's generating an alert and then we'll adjust its snooze property in order to throttle alert frequency. So for example, uh, we're going to jump over to our proactive monitoring system. And that's right here. So what we might want to check is, and for example, in the real-time alert manager, we might be getting this particular uh, alert quite a bit. This one's a fairly common one that we like to throttle. And uh, it's an alert generated by proactive monitoring where a session runs successfully but loaded zero target rows. Now, with the alert that gets generated for any out-of-the-box proactive monitoring rule, whether it be for you know operations or governance, every single alert is going to have what we call a footer section. And you can see that footer section down here in the alert details. It's this very small text down here at the bottom. Now, in this footer section, now this will be the, this mind you, this will be the same format whether it's in RTM or an email. So uh, what we want to point out is, you know, you've got various details in here, but the most important detail is the originating rule that created this alert. And you can see here, this is the rule name. And the rule name here is PC underscore OS 12, check if session runs were successful, but zero rows were loaded. Uh, so let's say, okay, you think, well, all right, well, I, I'm, I do want to get these alerts, but I don't want to get them every once every 10 minutes. You can see they're coming in once every, you know, 10 minutes here. And we don't want that. So let's say we want them to show up once an hour. So what we can do is again by getting the rule name from the footer section here, grab this, you can actually just grab the first part of this rule name, you can copy it, go back to rule point. Now I already have my rule point tab open. This is what you would probably see in a typical proactive monitoring system, uh, you know, typical home page. So you would go to rules, show rules, and you'll notice in the, in the top right corner of the screen, there's a quick search over here. You can just paste that piece of the uh, rule that, name that we copied, hit the enter key, and it'll show you the name of the rule that's generating the alert. So then all you will have to do is select it. And what you'll see is uh, we have this down here, which is called the then clause, or which is also the response section of the rule. This is what we call the power center notification response. And this is the um, this is the portion of the rule that generates a response in this case this particular rule is generating a new event 
what's happening here is it's creating a new event on a new topic called PC notifications. PC underscore notifications is the topic that generates alerts, whether it be email alerts or RTM alerts. Now, what's happening here is you'll see that we're this properties equal stars is basically saying we're keeping all the properties of the originating event that created our uh, that caused the rule to fire, excuse me. And what's happening here, so we're taking the original PC completed sessions event and we're now publishing it. You can see here's the old topic name as well. We're publishing it as a new event under topic PC underscore notifications. We're keeping all the original properties. And now this here is called params. This is what we call an, this, for this particular type of response, which by the way is called an event transformer. That's what the power set of notification response is. It's an event transformer. We're adding a bunch of new uh, event property name value key pairs. So for example, we're going to be adding a new property called body. And oh, by the way, here is the actual, um, you know, here's the actual body. Here's a new property called subject. Here's the actual subject that we're keeping. You know, and all those other various properties. But what you'll also see, what I really want to draw, draw your attention to, is the snooze property. Now again, this is where we set the snooze property. So what's happening is when this new PC notifications event gets created, It'll create a new alerting event for this topic, PC underscore notifications, and with all these new properties and this snooze property, which has a value of zero. Now, again, as I mentioned earlier, the snooze property of zero means that no matter, you know, if this rule fires every time, you're going to get an alert every time. So, what we can do is throttle this by setting this snooze and changing it from zero to 60. So, that way, if we do that, then the most times we'll see an alert you know, whether it's an RTAM or an email will be once an hour. So all we do is we edit the rule and you'll see, you'll scroll down on the alert editor and you'll see the uh, snooze which is right here. So all we're going to do is change that value from 0 to 60. That's it. And then you can just go ahead and um, click Save. Now you may see this warning, it's okay. It's just you, This is just basically a uh, warning saying that a property has been referenced in the response but was never assigned in the conditions. You can dismiss it, click save, it'll flash again. But once you've done that, then, then you're basically done. The rule has been updated and the throttling takes effect immediately. So you can see here in our rule, it's set to 60. So now, moving forward, you know, instead of seeing this rule fire and you can see it fired again, you know, instead of seeing this rule fire once every 10 minutes, I'm only, you know, moving forward, you only see alert, this particular alert show up once an hour, whether it be an RTAM or an email. And that's basically it. Now that's for an advanced mode rule. This is what this is, an advanced mode rule, meaning you can actually edit the rule syntax directly in an editor, make a change, and it's done. Now what happens if the originating rule is a template rule? Well, again, rules are created from templates and what you have to do is if in this case let's go back and show rules very quickly here we'll just show this very quickly uh, basically you have three types you've got advanced mode wizard mode and template template rules are the ones that are you know created from what we call templates now what we can do here is you can see let's we'll just take this one for example this is a template rule where uh, it checks for mapping name must begin with M underscore you can see the template name here in this column in this column right here in the middle right next to type and it's PC underscore GMT one so what we can do is then we can go to our show rules menu show templates and you look for that template, it's right here, it's the second one down, PC underscore GMT1, select it. And now what we have to do here is a little bit different because remember we have uh, child template rules created from this template. We actually have, you can see here in the rule count, we have one rule. If you click this view link, it would take you to a read-only um, read uh, view of that rule. So we go ahead and uh, what we can do is we can do an upgrade operation here. If you click upgrade, this will allow you to edit the text of this template. You can see here, just like in the advanced mode rule, we also have all these additive properties happening. Again, it's a, it's a power set of notification response, which is an event transformer. Just like with the other one, it's creating a you know PC notifications event. Oh, and by the way, here is our snooze property. So if you wanted to do that, all you would do is click upgrade. And that will allow you then, it'll take you to the point where you can then edit this template. And what's nice about this 
is you can see here here is all your, your here's your changes you could then just update this you could you can make a change here if you wanted to you could make snooze equals 60 and you could see here I would then I, I made my change and then you click test changes and then you click save and there's actually after this point you have to just type a little comment saying you know that you, whatever change you made typically you just say changed snooze value from 0 to 60 and when you click save then that uh, you know that template is upgraded basically upgrades any template rules that were created from it and then the test is done it's all set your snooze uh, value is in place and alerts for this particular rule will be throttled to once an hour now I'm just using 60 minutes here you can make it 30 minutes you can make it 15 minutes 120 minutes whatever you see fit so really that's it so I'm gonna cancel out of here I don't want to save my changes you know that's really all you need to do uh, so basically uh, that pretty much takes care of alert throttling within proactive monitoring so this way you know if you have rules that, that are firing but you, they're firing too often you're getting too many alerts but you think they're providing value if you want to throttle the alert frequency back that's all you do you just update the snooze property and you're done and like I said we go back through the email or RTM alert go to the footer section get the you know get the uh, the rule name in this case PCOS 12 and update the rule if it's a template rule the template rule find the parent template and then perform an upgrade operation on the template and that's really it so uh, that pretty much concludes the video let's go back to uh, the summary here so you can see that the snooze property provides for an easy method to throttle alerts being generated by proactive monitoring you know making a snooze property change for a rule takes effect immediately and by the way no tomcat or rule point web app restarts are necessary you can also see KB article 158375 for a write-up which uh, deals with the snooze property and also how to adjust it. It basically covers a lot of the information in this, in, in this uh, video as well but it's just nice to have as a companion article. So that concludes um, my video uh, presentation on the snooze property in proactive monitoring uh, rules and how, to, and how it's used to throttle alerts. Uh, so uh, I, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you may email uh, feedback to support videos at informatica.com or you may tweet uh, feedback to supports uh, Twitter account which is as you can see right there the address is at the bottom there and uh, again my name is Jim Kenny for Informatica customer support and uh, I thank you for watching this video